Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Tim Larson here with another YouTube tutorial. This time we tackle the methods and materials you use in inking a comic book page. I'll break down with you step by step the process of turning pencils into a sharp, hard-edged, black and white inked page ready for laying color into. You'll be shown laying out the gutters, doing curved lines, then straight lines, then thin lines, finishing up with blacks and shadows, then lastly erasing and retouch. I'll also show you a few tips on what to do if you mess up, plus show you some of the methodology behind where to put the shadows. Shall we begin?
Okay, I want to talk about this page uh, after I've inked it, and basically, from the pencil version to the ink version, this page looks very antiseptic and raw, like there's whites going straight to blacks, and that's kind of what you want in an inked page. You see a few flaws and errors, this is what I'll do. In the next step, the last pass, I'll go and correct things, fix things, add things in. A lot of stuff, like the messy ink right down here, um, that is going to be fixed in Photoshop. This shadow effect down here, which will be black, I'm going to do that in Photoshop and flip it and make it into um, a black space with the floorboards, the lines turning white. It'll be a really cool effect. It's easier to do that in Photoshop than to uh, put that in the actual page itself. But so far it's looking good. And coming home to what I was talking about in the color process, white and black are really just two elements of the um, five choices you have. There's red, yellow, blue, white, and black uh, in, in the sense of the black is going to be in the pockets of things, in, in the edges, in the shadows. Um, and you're really thinking about the lighting and the coloring here. It's late at night, it's dark. So the lamp light up here is gonna be casting light down. This man is in shadow. So I'm giving him more blacks here. Again, he appears here and still in that shadow. That's why there's more attention to shadows here. This man right here reading the book, he's way in the back there. He's more exposed to the light. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, and then down here, this will be um, running up the stairs, which I hope is obvious looking at the sign, the establishment panel here. 
that this is an upstairs joint. You know, they're they're talking. The word balloon's coming from an upstairs uh, kind of place. So then this man running up and saying, hey, go turn on the TV, will obviously be coming from downstairs up to the space here. Hopefully, you know, that that's going to connect visually. Um, otherwise, I don't know what else to say about this as far as inking goes. Just that um, don't worry about making mistakes. Uh, just try and get a method going. Erase... Um, thoroughly and efficiently going with the, like I said, the, that, um, kind of simple rough eraser or Milan eraser, like a yellow eraser, one that doesn't tear the paper in, and, um, it doesn't really, it's not a plastic eraser, it's a rubber eraser. And then the fine work would be a plastic eraser. That's what these are, the white ones. And that it really goes in and takes out the lines that you might've missed with the general all over eraser. And then having a nice, um, Draftsman's brush always helps out, or you could use a paintbrush or anything just to get the eraser crumbs off. But basically, that's it, and from there, we'll go to scanning later. Just want to um, kind of uh, broaden or uh, just want to expand on the idea of inking and light and shadow. And this applies to uh, black and white comics as well as color. In this case, um, I'm anticipating putting color in this panel here. I want to talk about this panel right here. And it's a really good example of thinking about spaces and where to put the blacks and where to uh, apply the breaks and stop putting blacks in. You notice that the, the blacks trail off fast. There's not a lot of hatching. There's not a lot of dots or dippling or, or shading. It goes straight from white to black, which reproduces really well in the print media. And it works really well with color because there's a lot of empty space in here that will let the color part of it tell the rest of the story and create the space. Basically, as you can see, here's a character who's running up the stairs into the room and the rest of the room is depicted on the rest of the page. But want to focus on uh, how I dealt with uh, the light and shadow. The light source is really coming from the room. Okay. So think, you know, it's hard to see it here, but the lights from the room, the stairway and the, the, the space in the stairwell is dark, a little bit darker. Okay. So this will all be some kind of like, I don't know, like a dark greenish blue, maybe by the time I color this in the characters emerging into the light and there actually might be a light source here with a hanging light bulb. It might be a good idea. Anyway, so I'm thinking about the space in the stairwell. I have the, the wall with the doorway that he's passing through. That's one plane, okay? It's, it's one surface that has its own flat surface. It kind of is, is in the same surface as the stairs themselves, you might say. And then there's this surface here, which is the wall. And then up here, of course, is the ceiling. So I'm thinking about putting just a little black in the darkest of those three spots here, the, the wall that he's entering through the doorway, the door threshold, okay? That will probably be the darkest. So I put a little bit of black in here, anticipating the colors to kind of blend in with that. Now the character here, of course, the back side, where it's farthest away from the light source, that's where the dark, the black is going to be. But again, I kind of apply the brakes on making him completely black all the way to the bottom. And the reason for that is I got blacks down here, and I got blacks up here, and I got blacks up here. I don't want them to touch. I don't want them to conflict with each other. I want the blacks of the character here to stay in that character, in that space. He has to be separate from the space he's running through. And if I were to, okay, like if I were to fill this wall up all the way, then the character would be connected to that wall. And you might have a visual problem. It, it wouldn't wreck the comic book, but it would be kind of murky. It would be a little bit of a hiccup. You know, you look at the paging, try to, oh, uh, okay, he's running through. But if I don't do that, if I try to keep the blacks 
in their own little islands, separate from each other, following the, the, the visual rules and not photorealistic rules, then I wind up with a page that scans better. And, and scan is, is another way of saying uh, uh, the, the audience is reading the words in the comic book and they're following along. And it moves the story along and it doesn't really offer you anything that, that bogs it down with trying to figure out where the space is. So that's a little bit of a hack. You know, and it came from making mistakes and having awkward and, and ugly panels that didn't quite work. And I kind of studied them and say, okay, what's well, not working here? And it's because I connected the blacks too much together with different elements, different parts of a space. And, and it took a while to kind of figure out, okay, lay in little pockets and corners of black instead of just following logically, you know, filling in the whole thing. So I hope that that's a little bit of a insight there, a little tidbit to follow. Okay. Okay, that went good. Now time for my artwork critique. This one's sent in by John Himmelstein and Gate Karain with lettering by Tim West, a vampire voodoo western entitled Bereft. This comic book called Bereft uh, that was um, posted on Reddit and uh, they wanted to have a critique somebody uh, to talk about their work and I was happy to do this on my YouTube uh, tutorial um, and we, I got my permission to do so um, from Gate Karain and then there's uh, he's the creator writer and co-editor John Himmelstein is the illustrator and we got Tim West with lettering and Julie Medor is the co-editor so thank you guys um, really appreciate you submitting this it looks awesome uh, it has a really nice um, blend of the tablet style. Uh, there is one knock I have to give, in all honesty, this this title, I, Bereft, it's B-E-R-E-F-T, and that means to have lost a loved one. A loved one has died. You're the, you're bereaving, you're, you're griefing, you're, you're in mourning. Bereft means to be without, okay? Um, and I don't, it looks like, <laughs> it's hard to read that T on the end there. So I would definitely change the T around, change the font. Um, just do something with that so that it's easier to read. But let's move on from there, okay? The beginning is really strong. We have somewhere in Texas, 1862, there's this mysterious hut, and it opens up. And here's this perhaps Indian Shah uh, woman, <laughs> witch, uh, uh, witch doctor. And she is um, crafting her spell. And here comes these cowboys that are going to meet up with her. And this is good right here on the, the lower right. Um, this page... Um, I guess it would be page four. Um, let's see, let's count them. So we got one, two, three. Oh, th page three. Bottom of page three, we have a horse's hoof crossing over the magic spell, and boom! This is the result. So that's what's called a page turn. We have something that um, incites a, a curiosity, of, and the reader wants to know what's going to happen next. So you put all that stuff on the right hand side of the right page down towards the right bottom corner that way the reader will be um kind of curious and and want to know what's happening next we have all but one guy killed she's coming up to that last guy he's got his gun down here he whips out his gun but then he gets his head chopped or his throat slit boom gets a shot off misses her entirely i think but now we got these other force coming down from the sky get the hag rip rip and this is a little unclear um the green light i kind of assume it's the hag shooting up at them okay 
but that kind of takes um this this close up here on the second panel is really really good <laughs> she's truly a grotesque uh let's keep on going here okay so two of the vampires are dead but then the third one isn't pissed off at all. He's just saying, bravo, bravo, that was exquisite, Lonsala. You created a sur superb tableau. Look at that, a flying sycophant. We need to chat. So this vampire needs her help, okay. And they sit and talk, a little expositionary stuff. Again, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty easy to read. And then, um, we jump to the blacksmith's hut. Uh, there, it could have benefited by a pullback shot, maybe going from this page to this page, uh, seeing where, you know, um, where we are this is a different place and this, this is what i was kind of thinking about when i first read read this through the the back and forth between these two characters is good but then we go here and there's not much of a link up between the supernatural phenomenon and these supposedly regular people inside this room if they mention something about weird happenings or some kind of connecting tissue between the two things, that would certainly be helpful. It just seems a, just a little bit jarring, unless we get pretty soon a connecting storyline. We get this other guy coming in, mind your manners. Blah, blah, blah. And then we got other people coming in. Everybody's coming in this room. <laughs> Again, a good page turn at the bottom here. We've got two bad guys pulling out the guns, and I can see tiny little fangs here, so something is up with these people, and there's going to be something happening. Sure enough, bam, 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 bloodshed, mayhem. A uh, little bit of a criticism with the action here. Let me um, see if I can... Take you there, okay. This is where, when you're drawing a comic book and you're going into action scenes, you really gotta study people who came before you, like the masters. So what, how do you put in the focus, the focal point? This is working at the same level of the people sitting around and chatting, but it really should be something that is bold and bright and really takes your your, your uh, really impresses your vision. You just go wow wow. I don't know, and I don't know how you do that. I mean, the two characters on the side here are really active and in this kind of violent scene, blood going off of the panel and into the the white space. That's cool. Into the gutter, the hand being knocked away. But I think that um, my eyes are drawn to the center of this panel here. And it's problematic because he's just simply not uh, not that well rendered enough for my eyes to be put there. So if you see what I'm saying, that plus the um, the font choice of the sound effects is nah, doesn't seem it, it's like a firecracker kind of sound, blam blam blam, not bam, you know, just just you know really get your attention uh gets a lot better in the rest of the action scenes down here he's leaping up that's great putting the scythe right through his head that's great oh and i just noticed now that it's coming out through his mouth that's cool and the blood is really good this kit this is really good okay here i'll show you if the first scene of action had this level okay this level of dedication to it oh, I, I just now noticed that the sound effects that's in the blood that's really cool 
uh, whatever it was, shoot, shock, or whatever, getting bludgeoned with a hammer. <laughs> okay. The, uh, the Asian girl. Good for her. All right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it, you, this action scene kind of gets let down by the first gunshot here. And I know that these guys can make something better. And maybe that one panel can be rethought later. Okay, let's move on here. So now we got the, well, I had to read this a couple of times, but this is the vampire guy who is left alive. And here's the, of course, the um, witch doctor woman. And they're coming up, down upon a little hamlet here. The the, the storyline is a little bit thin in that I, it's kind of hard for me to follow what's happening to everybody. Like here we got more cowboys. Are they good guys or the bad guys? And then we got the three survivors from that fight with the vampires. What, are they out of the blacksmith room? Are they hiding? Where are they going? <laughs> this is like, I think the writer knows exactly where the characters are, but I'm really confused. It's It doesn't wreck the comic book because basically it's just going to be bad guys versus good guys. And getting the background figured out is, is not really that important. Here we cross, like, come across a passage that's actually really cool, like the, the bewitched people being used as uh, fodder for the vampire and the, and the witch woman. And a really nice motif of just the blank eyeballs for people who are hypnotized. And that's what you can get away with, with um, this style and this level of kind of a cartoony uh, approach. A more realistic approach, you'd have to kind of explain why the eyeballs are blank. Or a realistic approach, you couldn't make the eyes quite stick out so much either so again yeah the action these panels right here aren't really doing it dudes I, they're just hmm i don't know why and um this is kind of cool where you got cowboys hovering so hey um vampires <laughs> wonder if there could be vampire horses too and they could hover as well anyway and then we they're going after the settlement these three guys okay yeah i think if this story could have had the good guys and bad guys whittled down a little bit have fewer characters or maybe they dress very differently or maybe the buildings have a very distinct quality bomb maybe have I don't know, the the three heroes living in a cave and they're saving people at a compound that's buildings. That way it's cave and then it's buildings. And you definitely have a a jump from one place to another. When everything's kind of molded to the same kind of place, then it's hard to tell. Here's a church. This is really cool. The, the hovering vampire people, they're going to fly in. They're bursting into flames. I like that idea. So the ideas are really cool in this story. And then we get the poor children being let off. And <sighs> turned into uh, food for the <laughs> witch woman. Okay. Again, the connection... They're talking. I still don't know who the other two are. Get ready. I don't see them anymore. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of muddy as to what the uh, good guys are trying to do to the bad guys and who's winning and who's losing. I do recognize some of these people right away. But it's very unclear as to what what side these battles are um like like when you make a story of, of a war story of the, the the allied soldiers versus the nazis and the nazis have definitely a different kind of uniform they talk different and they're probably in a different part of of the country whereas the allies say they, they're wearing u.s army uniforms and they got a sherman tank and 
if you can tell them apart. Um, like um, uh, the Crusades, you, know, you have the, the the knights, you know, with the big red cross on their tunics, the white tunics, and the chainmail. Then you have the um, Muslim the, the the soldiers, uh, and they got the pointy helmets and and spears, and you know, you can tell them apart as well. In this one, um, when the violence ramps up, then it's really good. When it's all one-on-one -on -one action, this comic is pretty good. It's the um, kind of general framework of where the conflict is that uh, I have a problem with. These panels are really just very, very gory and very well executed when the gore is present. Um, and the artist teams can work on maybe guns just charging and and the effect of um, explosions of gun barrels that would be helpful but it ends with this really cool um vampire who's taking a bite out of his the nearest <laughs> like a like a snack and nearest hypnotized human being and now the um that old hag is, you know, she's fueled up with all this young baby blood or kid. Now she's not too bad, okay? <laughs> she becomes a hottie. All right. Well, again, you know, the motifs are kind of cool. It's a fun read. Um, and to conclude with this, not, not getting too long here, um, I think that the, the title needs reworking because I, I do not read bereft on that at all um, the the setup is fine it's just the the scorecard of who's the hero who's the villain what are the villains trying to do what are the heroes trying to do is a bit cloudy so that can be addressed what works with this comic book is direct scenes of one-on-one -on -one action with maybe the exception of gunfire that gunfire can be worked on but when it comes to like a hammer bland uh, smashing into a vampire skull or let's go over here where the the guy's catching on fire um <laughs> let's go to the next one here there's this vampire right this is actually pretty cool let me zoom in here we go this dude right here like Pointing with this stump, we'll meet again, fat guts. This is really good. And had this comic book been strictly a match between two people, maybe a third one as the referee, or <laughs> if you limited it to you know four characters tops, it would have been a really good read. But because it's trying to mix in groups of people, I know that the writer knows what's going on and the artist knows what's going on and the two of them are working together and telling a story but the reader uh we really need to be led by the hand at least for the first couple of pages and be given what amounts to a scorecard so we can understand uh what's happening in the background and why so anyway that's the end of this one and we will do another critique in two weeks time thank you guys very much and i look forward to seeing more of your comic thank you for watching that i hope you enjoyed the breakdown of bereft as much as i did uh as always you can subscribe to these videos by hitting the sub subscribe button <laughs> sorry you can get a free downloadable pdf of my grindhouse biker saga comic book set in the 1970s it's called mayfield 8 and all you have to do to get your free copy is to copy paste the link in the description below or just simply type subscribe.timsnotebook.com you can also buy this for i think 6.99 plus shipping by going to my store site it's a uh, shop.timsnotebook.com stay tuned for uh june 30th where my next tutorial will be all about the color and how color affects the mood of a comic book story. And if you want your comic book critiqued, uh, make sure that it's in PDF format and uh, send me 
information about where I could read it in the comments below in this tutorial itself. Thank you very much, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.